I've been doing debating and public speaking now, I think, for, <laughs> for around 10 years. And every time it's my turn to speak, I just feel my heart race down all the way to my feet. And I'm like, ah, oh, snap. What if English runs away? <laughs> what if all these what ifs that happen? Um, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sydney Junior Madibo, and I am 20, I will be 24 uh, in September for those of you who want to buy me gifts. Um, <laughs> and I've been doing debating and public speaking, as I've mentioned, for the past 10 years. But then somewhere down the line, when I got to varsity, especially when I got angry that I couldn't continue with my law degree, I decided that, you know what, let me get involved in student activism. Because the main reason why I couldn't continue with my law degree was because I couldn't afford the fees. Then I applied for a bursary called Funza Lushaka. I was able to get that, and then I switched to education. So fees must fall is a very close subject to my heart. But at some point, I felt that fees must fall was going to drive me completely crazy because I was so involved in student politics and I wore a yellow Sasko t-shirt whenever we'd go for meetings, and I was calling people chief and comrade, and you can't tell me. <laughs> and one day I'm coming from a meeting, um, from a Fees Must Fall meeting, and at the time I was SRC president at the Northwest University. And as I'm walking to the class, now the lecturer is giving an example. She's talking about something completely away from race. But She's, she's giving an analogy and she's just explaining how, for example, if you want to do a particular kind of thing, um, it's like washing whites separately and washing non-whites separately. But at the time when I walk into the classroom, she's on that subject. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, chief, now no what? But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you so much for the opportunity to have me be a part um, of, the, of, of the summit. And we, apart from one day leader and doing a graveyard shift on another show called um, Youth Parliament on Power FM every Thursday morning at two in the morning when you are deep in sleep, um, we also started late last year a company. Um, we don't like calling it a company because um, it's, it's a lot of things called Little Big Steps. And through Little Big Steps, all that we wanted to do really was become examples um, to communities that we come from, from the township schools that we went to, and we wanted to leave an impact um, because we got involved in debating and public speaking and we saw the world of opportunity that that opened for us. Uh, we saw how it channeled our minds to think in a particular way. Um, we also got an opportunity to see how efficient it made us as leaders, especially when we got into um, positions of power at university level, such as SRC. And we saw just how being, being able to articulate whatever you want to say and being able to say it in a particular kind of way assist you especially to get the attention of a crowd as I'm doing now. And so when we start a little big steps, because we, we, we believe strongly in the transformation trajectory that South Africa still has to undergo, we decided that if we cannot really um, gather funds to develop South African townships infrastructurally, if we cannot get the means to take every single student to university, if we can't do A, B, C, and Z because we don't have the means, what we can do is go to our township schools, go to our universities, target our disenfranchised and mostly our poor students and poor learners and teach them a simple trick to unlock their minds. And ladies and gentlemen, that is exactly what Little Big, big Steps is. It's, little, it's a little step that we've taken in order for us to be able to make a very huge impact. Uh, you see, because I'm not too sure which one I'm going to press here. There are two green ones. Aha. Uh -huh. So Little Big Steps, apart from reading the huge information that I have there for you. We started it as three partners. Now, I'm the public speaker in the company. When people say, Sydney, please come and speak wherever, wherever, I'm the guy that usually goes and speaks. And then we have another young lady who is our uh, finance person, and she handles all the money, all the pay, uh, all the invoices that we give out. Um, if I take 10 runs from it, then I'm in huge trouble. And then we have another guy by the name of Spring Mazonke, who's our um, 
engineering graphics designer. So he takes all the videos whenever we go to speak, except for today because he had to go shoot somewhere and Busi had to go to the United States. But basically, all that we do, ladies and gentlemen, as I've mentioned, we go into communities and we go into different facets of our society and we try as much as possible to give lessons on how to become an effective public speaker, how to become an effective debater, how to become an effective leader. And we try as much as possible to target um, the worst of the worst that you can possibly imagine. Now, I'm not talking about... Um, on Monday, I, I, was, I was in El Dorado Park, for those of you who are watching the news in recent weeks. El Dorado Park was up in flames. El Dorado Park, Enadale, and a number of other townships just on the south of Johannesburg. And the decision to go to El Dorado Park was exactly for that reason. Because one of the other main issues that we came to understand was in South Africa, it is as if we're living in two totally different worlds. You have us, the people who are here at the Santon Convention Center, and we are having these discussions. But then there's someone who is in Alexandra who has no idea what shared value is. And those are the two different worlds that I'm speaking about. And the reason why we went into El Dorado Park specifically on Monday was because apart from just teaching, debating, and public speaking, and how to become an effective leader, we also want to enable young people to be able to understand that why is society constructed the way it is today? Why do we have fees must fall? Why do we have roads must fall? Why is it that there are so many angry black people in our townships, but no one knows why we are so angry? And so through this skill that we are, we are looking to, to impart, um, we, that is essentially what we, we want to drive across. Um, understanding, for example, being able to gather information, being able to research information, being able to understand that the move from South Africa during the apartheid era to the democratic dispensation, although was peaceful, to a certain degree, it was a compromise. A compromise that was taken for economic stability and not necessarily to um, void out racism in the country. And it is through these constructive engagements that we try to teach that we are able to have a broader understanding of the societal problems that we have. Um, so yeah, I've already told you why we started the company. So how do we create shared value? Um, I think that um, the summit itself, and I was asking myself this one particular question and an example that is not so far from us. And it's also something that you can ponder on. When we are having these discussions, when we're talking about creating shared value, who are we creating shared value for? Do we understand the living conditions of those we want to create shared value for? Apart from speaking about someone who's 15 kilometers away, how are we creating shared value in this room for those young people out there who are busy catering for us and giving us coffee and giving us tea? How does our objectives here not speak to someone who's 30 kilometers away or 15 kilometers in a township in South Africa, to that young person just across that door. And ladies and gentlemen, if we cannot speak to them, then we are not having an honest conversation. We need to, have, we need to reach a certain level where when we speak about shared value, as one speaker mentioned earlier, we need to be able to move from a point of just moving money from here to there, creating projects here and there, but more to transform lives. And the transformation of these lives, ladies and gentlemen, is going, it's, it's so deeply rooted, especially given our history as a country, given our history as a people. We have to have a broader understanding of who we are creating shared value for. But through little big steps, it is the young people that you see in those pictures, and you will see me talking a lot, as I am talking a lot now. Um, and in one picture, it is for RCLs at a school in Vanderbilt Park called the Val High School. We were doing leadership training for them. In the middle picture, it was a crisis at a school in Sabuking at the Residencia Secondary School where there was a problem of dropouts where we had to go in and intervene. And on the third picture, it's a group of uh, young people who are part of a tutoring program in a township called Bupilong where we had to go in and speak life to them. So we work in different um, types of environments, but as I've mentioned, we really target those areas within um, our communities that, that really need that role model, someone who knows what it's like not to have a mathematics teacher for six months, but is expected to pass maths at the end of the year. Um, so someone who understands that is far, in our opinion, able to, to articulate all of that. 
So in the 10 seconds that I have, ladies and gentlemen, I need to leave you with these three words. If you want to create shared value, you need to be able to have those three things. Consistency, commitment, and you have to be really concerned about our society. Thank you so much.